right. Can you hear me? Awesome. Good afternoon, Des Moines. And welcome to our much delayed third concert of the Des Moines Gamer Symphony Orchestra. My name is Aaron Parker, and I'm the founder and president of this ensemble. It has been such It has been such an exceedingly long time since we've been able to come together again to share these magnificent pieces of music from video games that so many of us know and love. Right off the top, I wanted to introduce you to our returning conductor, Akira Mori. <laughs> Akira conducted the Drake Symphony for many years, from which he recently retired. He also conducted our second concert back in 2019, and we are all so honored that he has returned to share his musical expertise with us for this concert. So thank you so much, Akira. <laughs> the first piece that you heard was a medley of songs from a game that features the fastest thing alive, Sonic the Hedgehog. Originally released in 1991, Sonic has been the mascot of Sega for their entire history featuring more than 20 installments in the franchise. The songs that you just heard were some of the most famous tunes from the original game, including Green Hill Zone, Marble, Marble Zone, and the theme of Dr. Robotnik. And I could not have been happier that our synthesizer player, Josh Whitver, was able to start us off with that Sega startup sound. <laughs> our next song is from another franchise with a long history, though much of it not in the United States. Fire Emblem is a tactical role-playing game, initially released in Japan in 1990, but the first installment did not arrive in the U.S. until 2003. Each game features a memorable cast of characters who grow and change as the plot unfolds, one that is always repl replete with mystery, legend, and treachery. The most recent game, Three Houses, was released in 2019, and it features some of the most breathtaking songs in the series. The song we play for you today is the E3 trailer theme, which will feature our concert master, Kathy Naja, on violin. <laughs> After Fire Emblem, we will have the theme of Nintendo's best spooky series of games, Luigi's Mansion. This game was the first Mario title to be released on the Nintendo GameCube, and only the second game to feature Luigi as the protagonist. This title introduced us to Professor E. Gadd, the Game Boy Horror, a play on Nintendo's Game Boy Color, as well as the ghost-busting vacuum cleaner, the Poltergust 3000. To me, the cleverest integration of music and gameplay is that while Luigi whistles and hums this melody throughout the game as he traverses the haunted house, he misses more notes if his health is low which is both adorable and very creepy. <laughs> anyway, enjoy our next piece of song.
How about now? That's a little better. As much as we love that scaredy cat Luigi, we cannot take the spotlight off of his gregarious older brother for long. Super Mario Odyssey for Nintendo Switch is the most recent installment of the Mario franchise, and it presents gigantic open world gameplay absolutely chock full of brand new characters. From the skeletal Tostarinan to the fork-like Volbonoan. Today, we will perform the instrumental theme from the game that should sound familiar to everyone who has traversed Fossil Falls. And we'll also be graced with an accordion solo performed by our very own Seth Hartman. Excellent. From that happy-go-lucky piece, we will change the mood entirely and showcase just how broad and deep the genre of video game music can be. Ghost of Tsushima is a game set in Japan in the 13th century, and it follows the story of a samurai who will stop at nothing to reclaim his home, even forsaking many of the honorable traditions that he learned through his entire life. It follows the vein of many other successful open world games, ranging from Assassin's Creed to Skyrim, yet it also serves as a testament to modern game development, in that the team performed extensive research on feudal Japan and made changes accordingly. We will be playing The Way of the Ghost, the game's theme, which will fe feature our cellist extraordinaire, Xavier Quinn. <laughs>
can hear me. Yes, good. Uh, before we get into the next few songs, I want to take a moment to introduce um, a little bit about our organization's development over the past few years, as well as introduce you to a few folks who play pivotal roles in our organization. When I started this ensemble in 2019, and I knew that I wanted to make an institution that will last and perform video game music for years to come. Not only that, but I wanted this ensemble to serve as a vessel for people learning, hearing, and performing classical music that resonates with audiences of all generations. Therefore, since a single person cannot organize a whole orchestra by themselves for very long, I tapped a few enthusiastic and talented individuals to form our board, and I would like to introduce them now. Jennifer Walter. <laughs> serves as our vice president. Not only does she love video games and play Stardew Valley until the wee hours of the morning, but she's also a talented musician and a band director at St. Pius Catholic School right here in Des Moines. Crystal Burns, right over there. She, she serves as our secretary. She is a diehard gamer who lives and breathes everything Zelda and a talented flautist and singer to boot. Crystal has served in many other nonprofit roles, including the min working for the Minnesota Symphonia, and I'm so glad that we have her on experience on board to keep us on the straight and narrow. Finally, Sam D. There. Hey, there, Sam. Serves as our treasurer. While he says that he does not have time for video games, I am sure that the rest of us on the board can remedy this in the very near future. <laughs> he brings a wealth of financial and logistical know-how so that we can be financially sustainable and keep everything by the book. I want to formally thank and congratulate all three of them for their roles in our organization. Thank you, Jennifer, Crystal, and Sam. Right now, the four of us serve as the board of our Iowa nonprofit organization, and we are right on the edge of being able to submit our application to become an official 501c3 federally recognized nonprofit organization. This would open an incredible number of doors for us in seeking grants to continue our work, as well as to allow for even more partnership opportunities with other organizations in the future. Another person who's given us an incredible amount of assistance is Carolyn Gunkel from Bigger, Drinker, Biddle, and Reef. I am so immensely thankful to have her guidance and legal assistance that they are offering pro bono to get our organization started. Carolyn has been incredibly helpful, and I could not imagine undertaking this journey without them, so thank you so much to Carolyn and Fager, Drinker, Fiddle, and Reef. And importantly, if you're enjoying this concert, then I would heartily encourage you to support us by contributing financially either through our website by scanning the QR code in our program or by visiting one of the boxes at the welcome tables at the exit and one back there. Um, your contribution helps us put on more concerts like this one to make the Des Moines Metro even more musically active and even more delightfully nerdy than ever before. <laughs> but back to the music. The next three pieces have each done wonders at expanding the gaming community. Two in the early 2000s and one much more recently. Sim City is a game series that has defined the genre of city building and simulation games. The first installment was released on the Amiga and the Macintosh in 1989, followed by numerous sequels across many platforms. The series did not explode into popularity, however, until the release of The Sims in 2000, a life simulation game that ushered in a whole new generation of gamers. The song we're about to play is the theme from the 2013 release of Sim City. The next piece is from another computer game that has defined a generation of gamers and has been recognized by the Guinness Book of World Records as the world's largest and most updated free massive multiplayer online role-playing game. With over 45 million players across its two iterations, with its old school version being by far the most popular, RuneScape has remained a constant in gaming culture since its initial launch in 2001. The song we will play, Skate the Fold, is the login theme for, of RuneScape 3. After that, we have a medley of songs from the global augmented reality sensation, Pokemon Go. This game took a lot of video game detractors by surprise because it becomes difficult to claim that gaming leads to a sedentary and isolationist lifestyle when the gamers are running all over the sculpture park downtown. 
<laughs> As trainers were running hither and thither collecting elusive magical creatures, they were also revolutionizing the use of location-based and augmented reality technology in gaming. Amusingly, one local business right here in Valley Junction knew that they wanted a poster for this very concert because of all the Pokemon Go players who frequent the gym at their establishment. So now enjoy these three pieces from SimCity, RuneScape, and the Pokemon Go message.
gracious, never been. Before we perform our final piece of the program, I want to take a moment to thank many of the people and organizations which have made this particular performance possible. First off, I want to give a huge thank you to Marnie Strait and the city of West Des Moines for allowing us to perform in this gorgeous Jamie Heard Amphitheater. I feel a certain level of giddiness that I was 10 years old playing Pokemon on my Game Boy while my parents drove around West Des Moines and now we're playing Pokemon Go music right next to West Des Moines City Hall. Just saying. <laughs> Second, I want to thank Chris Goodson and Plymouth Congregational Church for allowing us space to rehearse. <laughs> we had we had quite a few curveballs thrown at us in the last few weeks leading up to this concert, and Chris and the staff at Plymouth were exceptionally accommodating in allowing us to schedule some rehearsals there on short notice. Next, I want to thank Mike Ramirez, our timpani player, as, as well as all of the Des Moines Community Orchestra. Not only did the Community Orchestra allow us to borrow their music stands, as well as all of the percussion equipment that you see on the stage, but Mike also volunteered to transport everything by driving the community orchestra's trailer, which is an unenviable, but much appreciated task. I also cannot help myself from giving another huge shout out and thank you to Akira Mori for his exceptional musical leadership. When I reached out to congratulate you on your retirement from Drake and you responded with, oh, I absolutely want to keep conducting the Gamer Symphony, I could not have been happier. So thank you so much, Akira. And then finally, I want to thank each and every one of the musicians on this stage here today. Each Each of them have volunteered their time and energy and talent to make something magical that all of us can enjoy. And I am honored that each of you has stepped up to make something epic. <laughs> the last piece on our program is a theme of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, featuring our illustrious keyboardist, Kaylee DeBont. And while many of you Zelda enthusiasts will know this theme, I want to point out something cool that you might not know. Kaylee, would you mind playing the first eight bars of your part for us for this song? Just go ahead, first eight bars. <laughs> So that's the main theme of the game, and that game was released in 2011. Now, would you mind playing those eight bars backwards? Like starting from the right and going to the left. Friends is Zelda's Lullaby, first heard in The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, released in 1992, and then immortalized in Ocarina of Time in 1998. So, what else can I say? Composer Koji Kondo is a genius, and video game music is awesome. I rest my case. Enjoy our last piece of the program, The Ballad of the Goddess.
Okay. I think you might be up for one more. Just one more. Whoops. Maybe a favorite from when we had our concert, our second concert back in 2019. Our true final piece for this afternoon will be from arguably the most legendary role-playing game in existence, originally released in 1997, but beautifully remade in 2020. Today, we will leave you with one of Nobuo Uematsu's greatest works, with a touch of irony in its name, given its position as a secret encore, the opening and bombing mission from Final Fantasy VII. Give it up for these fantastic musicians one more time. Support us. Support us by contributing to the QR code in your program or by stopping by one of the tables at the exit. Thank you so much for coming and enjoy our true finale.